So as she said, my name is Lydia Igwe, and today I'm going to be talking about the necessity of building an integrated online marketing plan. So before I start, can I do a little quick exercise? Now what I want you to do is stand up if this applies to you. So how many of you run a business or work for a business? How does that apply to you? Great, okay, sit back down. You can see I'm trying to wake you up. <laughs> Next question. How many of you search for things online before purchasing? Stand up, if that applies to you. Great, fantastic. Oh, okay, I was just checking. <laughs> Literally an exercise just to wake you up. Great, I've got your attention now. So who is we? We're an independent digital marketing training consultancy firm. And it's not we as in the PlayStation or the game. It stands for We Inspire Enterprise. What I'm going to be talking about is integrated marketing. So let's start with actually looking at the definition of integrated marketing. You can see it says unifying traditional and non-traditional marketing channels and applying consistent branding messaging and strategies and using cross-channel promotions so channels reinforce and strengthen each other. Let's take Domino's for an example. Remember it said using non-traditional and traditional. There was reinforcing and there was strengthening and there was cross-promotion. Now Domino's, and I will not go into detail in this case study, but if you do want the full case study, email me and I'll be quite happy to send it to you. But looking at Domino's briefly, you can see they've got non-traditional, so they've always had a store, a shop, you can go in, you can pick up pizza, you can phone, you can ring and you get the pizza delivered or you can collect. But they've also now integrated mobile, so they've got an app. So on demand, you can just order your pizza. You can choose what pizza you want and you can choose the length of time you want it to come. Also, they've got the tablet, so the version of the mobile app, but available for tablet but they also have online. And that obviously integrates their desktop website, but also, even more importantly, with social media channels. So Domino's is a very good example of integrating and cross-promoting one objective. Who can tell me what that could be? Absolutely right, selling pizza. Tasty pizza to customers. What are they thinking about integrating all these channels? What's the number one thing on their mind? Who can tell me? Anyone? Want to guess? Order pizza. <coughs> Definitely. For who? Thank you. Their customers. So in that definition, the number one thing your business, whether you work for someone or you run a business, should be thinking about is how to make things easy for your customer. Integrated is the word. So why integrate? I'm going to focus today on just four key benefits. Number one, multi-channel brand visibility. Your brand will be visible to different communities and demographics. With lots of social media channels now, up to 200 and more, it's difficult, of course, I appreciate, to pick and do all of them. But what this is saying is, have multi-channel. You can no longer depend on one channel for communication. You cannot have just your website. You need to think about the different types of customers you have. You need to think about how they will respond to your brand, where they will see your brand. If you think about just the social media channels alone, there is Facebook, there is Twitter, there is LinkedIn, there is Instagram. So clearly the people on those platforms are different and they're also looking for different things. But the reason for integration is to make you think about what channels you're going to use, how you're going to use them, what messages you're going to use. So number one thing for integration is multi-channel. You have to integrate all the different channels. Number two, your messaging. It has to be clear and consistent messaging. What I mean by that is your brand voice has to be speaking the same language. If, for example, you are running a Mother's Day campaign on your Facebook page and you're driving me to your website as a restaurant to book that lovely Mother's Day meal, what is it I want to see when I get to your website? I want to see the Mother's Day promotion. Why would I want to see anything other than that? Because that's what you put out on Facebook. Clearly, I will click from Facebook to your website. That's consistency. You have to think, if I'm using a multi-channel campaign to actually drive my message, everything has to speak the same language. 
Now, this doesn't just apply to the message, this also applies to the culture of the organisation, the team that deliver the campaigns. It has to start from the senior management right through to the person putting the post on social media. Everybody has to be in the game. Each channel, even if you've got somebody doing email marketing, somebody doing social media, somebody doing SEO, it has to be speaking from the same tone. Otherwise, you will fall into the trap of confusing your customer. In terms of number three, this is talking about cross-promotion. What this is saying is maximise the different channels, but not just yours. There's three different types of channels in terms of when you're looking at advertising. One is your paid media, two is your owned media, three is your earned media. Your owned media, who can tell me what I mean by that? Owned media. Anyone going to guess? Diana. You can't guess because you're my business partner. Anybody else? <laughs> Alright, I'll tell you. Owned media, things that your company owns. So that's your website. It might be your... Um, Email. It could be anything that you have a decision to create and distribute to your customers, and it all lies within you. Your earned media is other people talking about your brand because you've influenced them. It could be a mummy blogger, it could be a, a PR agency, it could be a journalist. It's people that you've done enough to, to convince to talk about your brand. And that's where the cookie is, really. The more earned media you have, the less you have to spend. And the more you do, the more it gets maximised. Your paid media is when you buy adverts. So again, integration for cross-promotion should think about those three umbrellas. And you should try and prioritise what's important in all three. Number four, brand credibility. Your audience will hear your message for a variety of credible and reliable sources. What that's basically saying is, it takes, this is the average rule, the old marketing rule, that it takes on average about seven times before somebody sees your message before they actually purchase. Seven times. Now, you're thinking, yeah, that's probably about right. You see an advert on, your, on the side of your Facebook, then you leave, that, you leave Facebook, you go on and search for something, then all of a sudden there's something in Google Ads, then you go somewhere else like YouTube to watch a video and it's popped up again, or you drive past, there's a banner automatically that brand in your mind is validated. You might not have even bought their product yet, but all of a sudden you think, I can trust that company, or I keep hearing about that company. Or you might read somewhere about that company from a third party and think, yeah, automatically <coughs> it validates. So in terms of integrating, the more you use multi-channels, the more you do cross-promotion, and the more you have strategy behind it, the more credible and reliable your brand will be perceived as. Now, how to integrate. Four critical steps. I'm only going to focus on four today, because I've got 12 minutes. How am I doing for time, I hope? You're on seven minutes, 45 seconds. <laughs> Good. I'm really, really sick of my water, so do excuse me. Um, so, you've got four steps. The first one to think about when you're building your plan, because this, this is about thinking about the plan itself, <coughs> the integration plan. Build your narrative. So what's special about your business? What's unique? What's your business story? What do you want people to shout about? How do you want to earn that media talking about your, your business? What do you want ringing from your customer's tongue? For Domino's, it's great pizza. What's yours? What's your brand story? Really take time to build your narrative. Number two, refine your messages. Don't just build a story and then put it in the cupboard and hope somebody actually reads it or finds it, because that's not what's going to happen. You need to look at how you're communicating. How can you best maximise that story? What channels are you going to use? What tone of voice are you going to have? You know, what resources can you bring to the table? How best can you actually review what's working as well in terms of your messages? You're not going to always find the perfect campaign results just from doing all of these steps, because there's always a learning curve. You're going to continuously need to refine your message. You might start with one and see what's working, but you should always have the core of your brand vision, as well as your campaign vision, in your messages. Number three, identify your communication channels. So with all these different platforms that you have, we're sport for choice now, and sometimes not, not every business has resources to be able to do everything. So prioritise. What's going to get you the maximum impact? 
See what's working. It could be social media, but there's lots of channels. So target the customers and the audience that you believe are on those platforms. If it's business to business, it might be LinkedIn. If it's business to consumer, it might be Facebook. But then maybe you have more imagery and video, so you might want to use Instagram. You know, but really think about it, or it might even be email. You might want to focus on email because you can tell more in your email, and you find that email works for you. But whatever message you're sending and communication channel you're using, you really need to pick the best one that works for business. Don't take on all of them. Number four, build your plan. Remember that the definition is definitely about unifying your, your channels. It's about strengthening them and it's about your customer. So that definitely means you need a strategy. So integrating your channels for an uh, online marketing plan is definitely about the customer, but there is some strategy behind it. It's not a guessing game. It's looking at what works for your business. It's looking at what channels work. It's looking at how often you can service those channels. It's looking at pre-planning of what content can go on those channels. It's looking at what resources, images, videos that you can use for those channels. So clearly there is some thought behind it. And there is a really good framework that we agency has, that we use in our training, that can actually help you to think about your plan way in advance, even before you go out and implement it. It's like the old saying, you know, if you, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Thank you very much. My name is Lydia, and hopefully you've learned a little bit about integrating your marketing for your online. Well, just a quick selling tool. I thought I'd learnt from Annalie. <laughs> uh, build your integrated online marketing plan. Save the date, July the 21st, at David Lloyd in Cowley. No, I'm not taking you through a shebang class. Um, and um, you can find out more information on our website. Thank you very much.